Welcome back to Made Simple. Today we're going to be talking about the book value per share or BVPS. But before we begin, like always, make sure you subscribe, smash that like button. I would really appreciate that. So basically, the book value per share shows the minimum value of a company's equity and measures the book value of a company on a per share basis. And this metric is often used to determine if a stock is un is considered to be undervalued or not. So let's talk about how you calculate the book value per share, and then we're going to talk about how that relates to a stock being undervalued or not. So to calculate the book value per share, it's the total stockholders' equity divided by number the number of shares outstanding. All right, to better show this calculation, let's do some research on Netflix, NFLX um, is the ticker symbol. So what we're going to need to know is the total, um, well, we're going to need to know stock, the total stockholders' equity, and we're also going to know need to know the number of shares outstanding. All right, and that will get us our BVPS, our book value per share. All right, so going here to Yahoo Finance, you can search any ticker symbol or company um, and search it here, and, and you have access to all this information. So we're going to go to Financials, and then what we're going to want to do is go to Balance Sheet, but we're also going to want to go to the Quarterly Balance Sheet Report, and we're going to want to find Holder Stockholders Equity, which is hidden under Total Equity Gross Minority Whatever, right? So Stockholders Equity. Um, and you could drop this arrow and you could kind of see what goes all into it, but we just need to know this number here. So we're just going to go ahead and copy that, go back to our spreadsheet here and paste that. And then what we need to know is the number of shares outstanding. So the shares issued are right here. And keep in mind that these are all in thousands. So all of these numbers just times it by a thousand. We're dealing with some big numbers here. Um, and we'll go ahead and paste that here. And then we're going to take the stockholder's equity divided by number of shares outstanding to get a book value per share of $29.06. So super simple calculation. The hardest part is just finding the variables. The equation to, to calculate this is in itself extremely easy. All right, so you can even go back here to Yahoo Finance and go to statistics. And you can go down and find the balance sheet book value per share MRQ, which is most recent quarter. And you'll see that it's also 29.06. So we, we did this correctly. Now you might be asking like, well, why do I need to know how to calculate it if I can just look it up? Uh, well, I, I think being able to calculate a metric really helps you grasp a better understanding of it. So you know what goes into it. So you know that you're taking this, the total stockholders' equity, so all the equity in the company, and dividing it by the number of shares to get the book value. Now, a lot of people confuse the book value per share as being the same as the market price per share. So the BVPS or the book value per share is different because it's more of a fixed number. You need updated financial reports in order for this number to change. Whereas here for Netflix, their current market price is $535.96 and that fluctuates with and that fluctuates with supply and demand so that is how they differ and so how how does this tell me if a stock is undervalued or not well a company is definitely considered undervalued if this book value per share is higher than the market price. In this case for Netflix, the market, the current market price is much higher than the book value. So looking at this metric, you wouldn't be able to really tell if it's undervalued or not. But it is a good metric to use in case the opposite applies. This book value per share also determines that if a company were to sell all of its assets after paying for all of its li all of its debt or other liabilities that it needs to pay off, this is how much money each shareholder would get upon liquidation of that company. So that's not a super realistic event that would probably ever happen. However, this metric is mainly just used to determine if a company is undervalued or not. It's just a quick way to gauge that. And so this metric is really only used by stock investors, and, and it's a good metric to use to determine if a comp company is 
undervalued. So in this instance, Netflix is much higher, their current market price is much higher than their book value per share. That doesn't necessarily mean that it can't be undervalued. It's just one way of determining if it is or isn't. All right, so hopefully you appreciated this video. If you have questions, please leave a comment below. And before you leave, please subscribe, smash that like button. I would appreciate that and have a great rest of your day.